Here is the workout for the week for November 6, 2023. You'll notice that there are multiple progressions, so this is going to be the simplest of the first movement called a sprawl. If you lack the flexibility to get your feet narrow when, it, when they come forward, then go ahead and go wide. This is the second progression. If instead of doing that on the ground feet version, you can do an elevated foot version, just ensure that you land with a neutral spine. This is a good one for people who are working on handstands. Level three, if you want to get some upper body strength and not just cardio, you're gonna go ahead and drop into a push-up immediately. So it's an elevated foot burpee, essentially. You wanna be very careful that you have the core strength to handle landing and descending at the same time without losing the neutrality of your lower back. The second movement is a Cossack squat. This is uh, the first version, so the simplest of its kind because there's not a lot of depth. As I step out, I'm not going down very deep, so neither the knee nor the hip are flexing very much. Level two progression just involves getting a lot more range of motion. So if you have the depth or the range of motion to do this, or if you're trying to work more on your mobility, this would be a good option for you. So a slower version, but definitely worthy in the sense that you'll get more mobility out of it. Next version of the same thing, the most difficult of these, both adding a weight, but also instead of just coming up and out of the side squat, you're gonna go through the middle. So you're getting a lot more mobility around the groin in this one. Next exercise, level one, ground to overhead. Very controlled deadlift, pulling the dumbbells up to the shoulder and then overhead in a strict press. This is the least cardiovascularly demanding version of the exercise. Next version, ground to overhead, level two. It's basically a squat clean thruster. Much more demanding because of the power and the speed. Next exercise, pike to plank. So feet elevated on a box. Trying to be patient to let the hips and shoulders and wrists be in one straight line. This is a good one for people who are trying to build their confidence in being upside down but are not ready yet to be completely vertical. The progression for this one is a wall walk. So you need to have some confidence. You don't have to be comfortable pick, uh, kicking up to the wall, but you do need to feel some comfort in becoming more vertical where your feet are approaching being over your shoulders. This is definitely more demanding on the shoulders, but also requires some confidence in getting upside down. This is just a side view, mostly demonstrating that you wanna be pretty careful that as you walk in, you don't want to let your belly be the thing that is closest to the wall, so you want to maintain that hollow body position so that when you're vertical, your nose might touch the wall if you have that strength and confidence, but you don't want your belly touching the wall. First version of this next exercise is a single arm forward overhead lunge. You want to keep the dumbbell stacked directly over your trunk as you do it. The progression for this exercise is just adding another dumbbell. So you do need to have more mobility in the shoulders and a stable core so as not to arch as a response to the weight going over your head. Last, most difficult version is handling a barbell over your head. The length of the barbell plus any added weight that you put on is gonna make this more challenging stability-wise and strength-wise.
Next exercise, level one, is going to be box dips. The reason this version is easier than the next is because the knees are bent. Level two is just straightening the legs, so there is more weight in the upper body, not much leaking into the legs. You want to make sure any version of box dips that your rear end stays very close to the box so as not to pull and tug on the shoulder. Level three is just feet elevated at the same height approximately as your hips. And level four is where your hips and feet are at the same line, but there's also a weight across your lap. Next exercise, pretty straightforward bicep curl. Essentially the only way to make a bicep curl uh, more difficult is to add weight to it. So this next progression is a pretty significant jump. What I could have done is added a band, so you don't need to do a strict pull-up. If you have access to a monster band, instead of bicep curls, if you wanted something more challenging, you could do pull-ups, but use a monster band to help you offset some of your body weight if you're not ready for full body weight pull-ups. Next exercise is a foot anchored sit up. So you wanna have some object heavy enough that your feet will stay attached and you're just crossing your arms with no weight across your chest. Version two, you're making the lever longer. So the weight hitting your core is gonna be heavier as a result of the arms extended. Notice that I don't have as much range of motion because it is more difficult to carry the weight in my arms. Level three just involves using very light weight, but believe it or not, those two and a half pound plates make for a huge difference in terms of the challenge of the exercise. You want to try to keep your arms behind your ears with this one. Next exercise, V-ups. Level one involves just bringing your hands and feet together at the top like you're being folded in half. This next thing is a pretty big jump similar to the pull-ups, which is going from a V-up to a toes-to-bar can be pretty significant. So what I could have done is demonstrated knees to elbow, where you are working on hanging as you bring your feet to your hands, but it's more that your knees will go towards your armpits. 